Welcome to Dodgers Daily. I'm Casey Porter. I'm so glad that you decided to tune in. Tonight we have a very, very, very special guest, right-handed pitcher in the Dodgers organization, Jonathan Edwards, joins Dodgers Daily. So, Jonathan, thank you so much for joining. I'm so excited about this. No problem. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. First of all, very cool earbuds. Very cool earbuds. What are those, Beats? Beats, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> I need to get me a um, pair of those. They're good for working out. They stay in your ear better than AirPods, I feel like. Yeah, those are sweet, man. I got to get me some of those. Got to get me some. I got the old-fashioned headphones. Nice, so, I, yeah. I got some over-the-head headphones, too. I love those. Yeah, I'm getting me some beats after I sell those. Okay, really cool thing. I am a history teacher here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. I have been for a long time. I do AP history as well. So when I was doing my research and I saw that John Carlos was your uncle, yeah. Man, I freaked out. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, this is like literally an entire chapter that we cover the 1968 Olympics with him and Tommy Smith and the demonstration of, you know, just the the pride of of everything that he was showing there and, and all of that. So, man, how cool is that for you to that for him to be your uncle? It's pretty cool. We don't have like a personal relationship. I've only met him once. Actually, he came to one of my middle school basketball games and I met him there. That was pretty cool. There. It was cool being, I was like in seventh grade, so I was young, and I knew who he was really, so it was a, it was a cool experience to meet him. But in, in sports and in like world history, he's like really important. So I did a project on him when I was in college one time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Social aspects in sports, yep. Yeah. And I had to dress as him for my project because it was like a, uh, a model project. So yeah, it was cool. So this is probably like the 740,000th time that you've been asked about John Carlos. Not really. I, I don't really. hear that often, yeah. Really? Okay. Well, that was really, really, really cool. So, okay, another light moment. I believe it was 2020. You guys went into number three ranked Georgia into yeah. their own home field. You played a three. I, I, don't, I think it was a two-game series, and then you played another game like four or five games later. And you beat them in all three games, and you were a big part of that. So – Man, talk about that experience. Talk about the party in Statesboro after that one, huh? Yeah, Statesboro is a fun town. It's really, um, it's really growing, especially baseball. Last year they hosted a regional, so that was a really cool experience. I didn't get oh, did they? There, I didn't realize that. They did. They were a top 16 national team last year. But uh, that Georgia experience was really cool because even though the year ended up getting cut right at the end after that. Yeah. So we were on this huge high from winning and beating Georgia, and then the season gets canceled. But it was oh. amazing. It was really <laughs> I think cool. Ben Harris was on that Georgia team too, wasn't he? He was. I think he got redshirted that year. He played in 2021 there after he left Virginia. Yeah, Ben Harris, a left-hander that pitched for Great Lakes last year, had one of the highest strikeout rates of anybody in any level. Anywhere. Of, yeah, anywhere, no doubt, man. He was striking out everybody for about two months. He was the best pitcher in baseball, period. Okay, another great moment, man. I think it was your senior year, maybe your junior year, no-hitter. And not only that, man, the cool thing about this no-hitter, okay, you guys won on a walk-off wild pitch, which I've been a part of those before. Yeah. And those are just pandemonium because you cross home plate and you throw your helmet in the air and everything's cool. Okay, and you threw the entire game and mm -hmm. your team won one to nothing with one a no-hitter. Yeah. Tell that me, Ball. I got to hear all about this, dude. That's the high school experience. That's the best baseball one. And the year before I threw the no-hitter, I pitched against Jones County and didn't record now. I started that game. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. And then I came back the next year and threw a no-hitter against them. So that was that was cool. That was uh, it was revenge, I guess. Yeah. But um, the walk-off was the best part of the game. The no hitter that was stressful, honestly. The yeah. walk off was the relief. Yeah. And honestly, I thought he was gonna get thrown out. <laughs> I was like, no, why is he going? But he made it. Were there no outs? There I don't know how many outs there were, honestly, but I, yeah, he made it. That's Who was it that scored? I gotta know the name. Uh his name is Jawan Wembley. He plays at uh, um, Savannah State now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very, very good. Okay, what are you? Six foot six, something like that? Yeah, six six. Yeah, six six, yeah. one ninety, somewhere in that range. Yeah, I'm a little higher than one ninety right now. I'm trying to put on some weight, get big boy, big boy weight. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Okay, so did you grow in college, or were, have you always been long and lanky? Like that? Um, I've been pretty tall since like the middle of high school. I was like six five, 
and like uh, going into eleventh grade, I was probably like six five. Yeah, six five junior in high school, middle of Georgia, which that's just the mecca of high school sports. There's that whole yeah. area of the world. Everybody plays every single sport. So surely baseball wasn't the only sport you played, right? Yeah, basketball. I only played one year in high school. I stopped just to play baseball, really, because I was a pitcher and I was kind of focusing on that. I still played a lot of baseball, like basketball outside of the school, like in gym class, and I go play with my buddies. But, yeah, I played my senior year just because I was like, what else is there to do? I was already signed to a college. And it was a yeah. lot of fun. Honestly. I was kind of like a six man on the team, but it was fun. Yeah. You guys must have been pretty good if you're the sixth man. Yeah, Eagles and is pretty good. They're, uh, they're, I think they've only lost one game so far. They won state a few years ago. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you played at Eagles Landing, which was, which is a great high school for all sports. You also played for the Hard Knocks Orioles. You played yeah. for Coach Briscoe, who's widely renowned for his work in the pitching area of baseball. So talk about that experience. Talk about Coach Briscoe and all your coaches in high school, too. Yeah. Briscoe is like uh, – is where I learned a lot of what I took on for the rest of my career, kind of. Yeah. Just like building the foundation for what I was going to be later. He had me in like those prime years where I was like really working on becoming a good pitcher. And he helped a lot, I feel like. Okay. So – you come out of high school, out of Eagles Landing. You've played with the Hard Knocks Orioles. You get mm-hmm. drafted by the Rangers in the 18th round, man, as a, as a 17, 18-year-old kid, maybe 19. I don't know how old you were when you 18, graduated. Yeah, but yeah that, that's pretty enticing. What, what, what yeah. led you to turn that down and go on to Georgia Southern? And then what led you to actually go to Georgia Southern? Um, I think physically I wasn't where I wanted to be. Like I was really uh, – I I'm skinny now, but – Coming out of high school, I was really skinny. And I feel like that mixed with just, I don't know, the college experience. It yeah. was too much. It was too much to pass up, especially at Georgia Southern. And I enjoyed my time here a lot. So I'm, I'm not upset I did it at all. Three years at Georgia Southern, correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we talked about, you know, the, the, the 2020 season whenever you guys beat Georgia. But just talk about your time there at Georgia Southern overall. Yeah. Um, it was my teammates were the best part of it. Mm -hmm. I pitched a good bit. Probably my freshman year was probably the most I pitched actually, but I just really enjoyed the team atmosphere. I got better as a pitcher every year, I feel like. So that's what important. And it got me to where I am now. So I am thankful for Georgia Southern. Yeah. You signed with the Dodgers after three years there at Georgia Southern as an undrafted free agent. And yeah. so you had your choice as to where to go. First of all, before we get into that, you know, it sounds to me like just listening to you talk, and I love these stories because I always tell people, you know, hey, yeah, making money in pro ball is really cool and all that. But you know what? Getting the college experience and getting to play pro ball, you can't beat right. it for anything because of the memory. So just listening to you talk, it's so cool because it sounds like you wouldn't trade your college memories for the world, would you? No, I wouldn't. I really enjoyed my time at Georgia Southern. Yeah, okay, so talk about signing with the Dodgers as an undrafted free agent after your three years at Georgia Southern. What, 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 of course, you're from the Atlanta area, you know, kind of close to Atlanta. So Mm -hmm. what what drew you to the Dodgers? Um, The pitching aspect of it. I mean, we have the best pitching coordinators, the best pitching directors of any minor league system. So the opportunity to, like, work under them and learn from them, that was too much to pass up. Really. Yeah, no doubt about it. Okay, so the end of 2021, you get moved from the, you know, and, and from the complex up to Rancho, out to Rancho, I should say. Yeah. So, first of all, whenever you went out to Rancho, had you ever been to California? No, I hadn't. I had okay. never been to Arizona before I signed. So, all of it was really new. Hey, they call it Hot Lanta, right? But yeah, is it a different. Yeah, some people do it. It's human. <laughs> it's human. It's, it's so. So the heat in Atlanta with the humidity combined versus the 115, 120 in Arizona, which one's hotter? Arizona's hot. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got used to the humidity, but the dry yeah. heat, yeah, that would get to Yeah, me. that's tough. Okay, so you'd never been to California, so take me through the experience. Whenever yeah. you first got there, you're standing 
you know, at, at Quake Stadium there, and you're looking at the mountains in the background. You're going, "Holy cow, man! I'm in the middle of, I'm in the middle of California, and I'm a professional baseball player." Take us to that moment. Yeah, um, I got sent was one other player, Gabe Emmett. He's another oh, yeah. leaguer. Me and him got sent at the same time, and he's one of the guys I kind of hang out with. So it was cool to like experience it with somebody else. So that was nice. But getting there, we flew into Ontario, and then we played at Lake Elsinore that first day. And I pitched like a game later. It was Lake Elsinore is a nice ballpark, so that was yeah a fun place to have your first affiliate outing. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And that Cal League is filled full of former AAA ballparks, you know, yeah. like San Jose and and Fresno mm-hmm. and places like that. Lake Elsinore is very, very – it's big, first of all. So yeah. the Cal League is really cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's fun to pitch there. Okay, so another light moment here. I ask everybody who's ever played for or coached underneath, Shoemaker, the manager there at Rancho, mm-hmm. have you ever seen him out of uniform? I feel like I've caught him at least once or twice out of uniform. <laughs> a lot of people say he's always in uniform, but I caught him after a game one day. I stayed pretty late because I had the hot tub. And I think <laughs> I caught a glimpse of him in some shorts, and I was like, what's this guy doing? This is different. But, yeah, I love Shoe. She's one of the better managers that I've been under. Even though, yeah. Okay, let's talk about your stuff. Obviously, the lower levels of minor leagues is to – to continue to develop and work on all the things that you need to work on and expand your game. So, you know, obviously the big fastball and and the big body. So tell us some of the things that you were working on last year while you were at Rancho. Uh, Last year at Rancho, I was really just working on just hammering in the fastball at the beginning of the year. And, I mean, I feel like I did a really good job of that. It was um, the hardest I had thrown consistently that year. So – uh, that was more fun than the past years when I was throwing like 91, 92. So uh, it's not more fun when you're throwing hard. What what things did you feel like you left this last season being good enough at? Like, hey, I, I accomplished my goals there. And what things did you feel like you needed to get better at going into the offseason? Yeah, command was one of the things that I really wanted to like uh, work on this offseason, just being able to throw all my pitches for strikes is yeah. the biggest goal always, obviously. But geez, just feeling um, athletic when I'm throwing and throwing strikes. So being in different positions and being able to throw strikes was my big thing. So I threw these different command balls that were different sizes and different weights. Those will make you mad when you're throwing them, but it's supposed to make practice harder. So when you're in the game, it's a lot better. And I've started ramping up in bullpens lately. And I've been feeling a lot more confident with uh, where I'm throwing the ball. So. All right, very good. So you talked about some of the things that you've worked on in the offseason. Talk about your offseason routine in specific. Yeah, so I have a job this offseason. Okay. That's part of my routine. I work at an Indian restaurant. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, something really new for me. I'm staying in Statesboro, actually, where I went to college. So I'm working at an Indian restaurant here as a host. So that's a new experience. But I mix in my my strength training. I've been trying to add on weight, as I said earlier. So I've been pushing in the weight room pretty hard. And I mix my throwing in. I throw at Georgia Southern. So I've been able to get on the track man there and work out with my teammates who who help, help get me here. So it's been good. Fastball, curveball, slider, is that the mix for you? Yeah, fastball, curveball, slider. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, talk about your your check your 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 curveball that big over the top. You know, you being six yeah. foot six, I'm sure you have great extension with it, and it starts really really high. So it probably has a lot of drop to it. Is that a harder pitch for you to control? Just seeing how much drop you get to that pitch. Yeah, it's definitely in the past been like a strikeout pitch, like a two strike pitch, like yeah. in the dirt. And I've been trying to really focus in on like landing it for strikes early and counts more often. So mm-hmm. it's like really different than my fastball and it's a pitch that I want to be able to use in a lot of different situations besides yeah. are you a different pitcher now do you think you were in college have the Dodgers done yeah. anything with you tweaked you at all definitely definitely we worked yeah. on getting more rotational I was my spine did not move how it needed to move and slowly we got there yeah yeah okay so you know you of course you mentioned the track man at Georgia Southern so I'm sure you had 
access to at least a limited amount of yeah. of some of the the advanced data and metrics or if not more than that mm-hmm. but of course you probably have more now at the professional level so you know a lot of pitching is feel and a lot of it is is nowadays is understanding the data so how does that combination work for you as far as you know crunching the data but also feeling it as well yeah um as i said the command balls have helped with the the feel of the ball out of my hand but mm-hmm. that has like honed me in kind of and mm-hmm. seeing the data just translates what i'm feeling really statistical measures we talked about your off season we talked about the things that you felt comfortable with going into the off season some of the things that you needed to work on do you have any specific statistical measures that you're looking yeah. to hit as far as walk rate or strikeout rate or any of that for next season um the biggest thing is innings that is yeah. going to be what i'm focused on the most staying healthy and pitching as much as possible and i think the more i pitch the more I've gotten in a groove and thrown a lot better. And that has like shown a lot since I've been with the Dodgers. I didn't throw as much in college. But when I started mm-hmm. throwing, I feel like I just need to pitch as much as possible. Okay. One of the really cool things about the lower levels of the minor leagues is that you have a whole bunch of people that are willing to help and you have an adopt a, a player type program there with mm-hmm. Rancho. And I know one of the people that's really helped you is Clyle. And so can you talk about that program and all the people that reached out to you and made you feel yeah. at home there in Rancho? Yeah, Clow is um, she's my sponsor from Adopt an Leaguer, and she's great. She's supplied me with so many groceries and everything when I'm in need of them in Rancho and don't have a car. <laughs> so that helps out a lot. You don't want to walk to Target when it's 97 degrees out. <laughs> Yeah, she and helped. you don't, and you really don't even know how to get there, or get back, yeah, or exactly. any of that. <laughs> yeah, she's the best. Even in Arizona, she was sending me stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. It was nice to finally meet her. She came to one of the games. I'm hoping she can come out to some games and finally match her this year too. Yeah, those people deserve some. Of course, they're not in it for this aspect of it, but they definitely deserve some recognition for the great things that they do. Because I don't think people understand. When you're in low A or high A or in the lower levels of the minor leagues, man, trying to scrape by and and figure yeah. out how you're going to pay rent and do all this kind of stuff, man. And, it's definitely you know, a lot better than it was. Uh, yeah, sure. no doubt. No yeah. doubt. So people like that are definitely, definitely very valuable. Okay. Yeah. I like to end my interviews with this question for for young professional players like you, okay, who all want to be standing in California someday. They all want to be looking at the mountains, and they all want to have that professional uniform on. How do you get there? What's your message for kids? Um, I would say you're always closer than you feel like it. Because if you just push a little further, you can be there. Wherever your next goal is, if you're feeling like you're giving up, you're closer than you feel like it every time. I'll be my favorite. Awesome, awesome message. Great job, Jonathan. This was a wonderful experience for me to get to to talk to you and meet you and and get a chance, you know, just to communicate here a little bit. I was, I've been a big fan. I've watched you from afar. I've never seen you pitch in person, but I watched you some while you're at Georgia Southern. I'm a huge college baseball fan, and then obviously watched you since you've been at Rancho. So, Jonathan Edwards, thank you so much for joining Dodgers Daily. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.